This is the chapter four review for some of the conceptual concepts, mostly dealing with FNET problems and Newton's three laws. I'm not going to write out Newton's three laws, but remember the first one is that a body in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside force that's not being balanced by another outside force. Newton's second law says that F net equals mass times acceleration, and Newton's third law says that uh, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Let's take an example where we have Earth and we have a ball that's falling towards Earth. I can, for example, use Newton's third law to justify that if there is a force moving down on this ball, in fact we call that Fg, there must be an equal and opposite force pulling up on the Earth that is equal to Fg in magnitude, but opposite in direction. Now, I'm going to just point out something here, that Fg is the weight of this ball, and that's the word that we use whenever we're comparing a small object to a large object, where the large object specifically is something like a planet. If you have that circumstance, relatively small object and then a large object that is a planet, we call this force the weight. If you just had a slightly different example where there's a ball out in deep space somewhere, so this is a completely different idea. If there was a ball out in deep space and here's me hanging out in an astronaut suit next to the ball, it's true that this ball will be attracted to me and I will be attracted to the ball. Those are going to be equal and opposite forces. However, that force of the ball's attraction to me is not called the weight of the ball in that case. I would still say it's the gravitational attraction, but don't get caught up in the terminology of us uh, saying the weight of the ball. Now if we go back really quickly to this idea before I move on, again this force is there. It's there every time a falling object goes towards the earth. However, the amount of force that we're talking about relative to the mass of the earth, the huge mass down here of the earth, is so insignificant that we don't actually get very much acceleration at all. So that small force that's sitting there gives a tiny, tiny acceleration and usually that would be unmeasurable. Since we're talking about a ball falling through the air. Let's take a situation where we have five different scenarios. In this situation, I'm going to have a hand, forgive the drawing of the hand, that's throwing a ball up. It's moving upwards, accelerating that ball up. Then in the next scenario, we're going to have the ball is no longer in contact with the hand, but is still moving up. Up here, I'm going to have the spot where the ball is at its highest point and for a brief moment in time it has no velocity. Let me just draw these out here. Then we're going to have a situation where the ball is falling back towards the hand and finally we're going to have a situation where the hand actually catches the ball and the velocity goes to zero again. Let's look at the free body diagrams associated with all of these situations. I'm going to stick with the three inner ones at the moment. I'm going to say that there's a FG going down. Remember that if the hand is not physically in contact with the ball, it is impossible for it to be putting an applied force on the ball. So this is my complete and entire free body diagram for that ball. The weight of the ball is acting downward, however, there's nothing else. When the ball is up at the highest point, it still has the same FG operating on it, the same weight of the ball pulling it down towards the center of the earth. That does not go away. Remember I say in class sometimes gravity does not turn off even though a physics teacher in Colorado threw a pin into the air. It does not matter what part of the path the ball is in as it's traveling through the air. Gravity will not turn off. That force vector is always there. So that leads me to understand that it must be there over here as well. That is also the full and complete free body diagram. I can come over here and I can still say gravity does not turn off, so I have to draw in Fg over here. Now, in both of these situations though, the left and the right, let's start with the left first. 
I'm accelerating the ball upward. So I didn't really label that clearly here, but I'm accelerating the ball upward. And it's also starting to travel upward, so it's picking up speed. When my ball is still in contact with my hand, there is an applied force from me that by definition must be larger than that FG in order to accelerate it upward. Over here, if we go on the right hand side, the ball is traveling down, so I have a velocity vector that's going down. So we'll say the velocity vector is down. However, the acceleration vector is up because the ball is slowing down. The acceleration vector must match the F net. So I need to have a net force that is upward, but I cannot draw the F net as an individual force on this ball. This is the applied force. The F net is the combination of that force and that force. So it's not going to be the full quantity. If this happened to be 10 newtons here and this FG was negative 5 newtons, then I could say that my F net is equal to positive 5 newtons because that is the bigger of the values. Let's next look at a situation where I have a surface, perhaps with a hockey puck on that surface, that's traveling in all situations with a velocity in that direction. This is going to be frictionless here, so that I can simplify my problem. Now I'm going to talk about three different scenarios. In the first scenario, I'm going to say that I want to slow the puck with a constant acceleration. In the second situation, I'm going to say that I want it to maintain a constant velocity. And in the third situation, I'm going to say that I want it to increase speed at a constant rate. My question to you is what type of force do I need to apply onto this hockey puck in order to achieve these different situations? For the first scenario on the left, I want to slow it at a constant acceleration. Remember that Newton's second law tells us how this all works. So F net is equal to the mass times acceleration. If you were to look at this hockey puck and draw out the free body diagram, there is an FG going down. There's an FN going up on it. That's going to be true in all of these cases. I do not have a friction force that's either going on the left or the right because I said it's a frictionless surface. These two guys, these two forces that I have here, are going to cancel each other in every single one of these situations. They are there, but they're not interesting in this problem. So according to Newton's second law, if I want to slow this thing down with a constant acceleration, then I need to have a constant net force. That means that I'm going to have to apply a force vector, an applied force, of constant magnitude so that I can achieve a constant net force which again will give me my constant acceleration. The other point that's really important to mention is that whatever direction acceleration you want, so I say I want to slow this and it's moving to the right, so hopefully you remember that is telling me that I need an acceleration vector that is pointing to the left because the velocity vector was pointing to the right. Whatever direction of acceleration I'm going to have is the same direction that I need to have for my F net. That's why those things have to match there. Along very similar notes, if I go look at the situation where I'm going to have a constant acceleration, I can say here's the free body diagram, there's an FG going down, there's an FN going up. Those are there, however they're not very interesting in this particular situation. And how am I going to achieve constant velocity or a constant acceleration. Well remember Newton's second law if the acceleration is zero well then the F net must also be zero. Right now if I just leave this thing alone I have an F net of zero so I do not need to apply any extra force onto this hockey puck in order to keep it moving at a constant velocity. In addition Newton's first law, the law of inertia, says that this hockey puck is in motion, and if there's no friction, there's no outside force on it right now that's not balanced. 
So it's going to stay in motion. If I go over to my last situation, I need to increase the speed at a constant rate. You should identify that I am saying that I want a constant acceleration. Given that I want a constant acceleration, I can then say I need that acceleration to point to the right because the velocity vector as indicated above is also pointing to the right and they must align. So I'm going to need an applied force that I could tack on to that free body diagram that's coming from the left hand side but pushing to the right so that I can get a, a net force to the right. The last thing I want to say is that you should always be paying attention to your units. If I have the planet Earth sitting over here and I have the moon sitting over here, here I am standing on the planet Earth. I have a very particular mass associated with me. If I want to compare me standing over on the moon, I can say that I have the same mass. And I think most people are pretty good at remembering that. Remember, mass is measured in kilograms. If I want to talk about the force associated with me, and typically we would use the word weight, I would talk about the Fg, which is equal to the mass times gravity. This number is very different for the surface of the Earth compared to the Moon. So if I had a 100 kilogram mass times negative 9.8 meters per second squared, on the Earth, I could say that my weight would be equal to negative 980 newtons. However, the gravitational force on the surface of the moon is negative 1.6 meters per second squared. So if I do mg for this thing, that still being 100, I will find that my fg on the moon is equal to negative 160 newtons. And again, I'm doing negative 1.6 times 100 there. So remember that your weight is not the same on the moon as it is on the earth or any other planet for that matter. However, your mass is the same. But the key that should always you should always be looking for the units. If you are measuring in newtons, you are looking at a weight. If you are measuring in kilograms, you are looking at a mass. Don't forget to always look at your units. That's all I have planned for the conceptual review. Don't forget there are FNET problems and there's also a honors problem.